Boo-hoo, how am I ever going to get in the game of real estate? Because Dave Ramsey says I have to save up enough money to buy the home cash. Is that really true? Listen, today Uncle Chris is going to share with you how you can get in the game of real estate right now, whether you got money or you don't. One, 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 or one shot, now the future for sure. Let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality. Yeah. It's one all one shot, now the future for sure. Let's go. I get it. I caught the real estate bug. I had met three people that had made over $10 million. One of them hadn't worked in the last decade of his life and I was jelly. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to learn how to do that. But you know what? Then I looked at the prices of real estate and I saw that a home could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and I'm not gonna lie, I freaked out. I'm like, I'm young. I don't even feel like I got a real job yet. I haven't really saved any money. I've got debt. How on earth could I actually get in the game of buying real estate? Today, I want to answer this question. How much do I actually need to get in the game of real estate? I mean, Chris, the prices of houses are only going up. Did you notice what happened at the end of 2020 last year? Check it out. The new median home price at that time was $346,800. And you know what? Do I think that number is going to crash and go back down anytime soon? No, how can it? Are you kidding me? We have more buyers than ever before. We are literally lacking so much supply that this has never happened in history before. And real estate problems take years to solve, as in it will take builders and contractors years to finally catch up to the huge demand that's out there. We've got problems for a number of years and that's going to continue driving prices higher and higher. And that could cause you to think this is just too unobtainable. This stuff's too expensive. I'll never get in the game now. Like, ever. Well, let's get some advice from one of my favorite mentors, Dave Ramsey. Dave says, if you're financially responsible, you'd be an idiot if you didn't actually buy this house cash. So if you're saving $300 a month, it'll only take you doot, 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 96.3 years to actually save enough money to buy your house. Stupid. Stupid. What would that mean for you? Wah, 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 wah. You're not going to be able to buy a home until you're 96. Don't wait to freaking buy a home until you're an old dude. You're going to have to get a little bit more creative and a little bit more aggressive than Dave Ramsey's advice. Today's video is brought to you by one of my favorite words, leverage. Leverage is an investment strategy of using borrowed money to increase the potential return on investment. And if Dave Ramsey were seeing this, he'd definitely be rolling over in his grave, but he's alive, so he'd probably be chewing me out. Stupid! Bottom line is, banks have money and they're willing to give it to you. You just gotta learn how to play the game of real estate super, super smart. And the last thing you need is for the market to come crashing down on you where your home is now empty, it's unrented, and you have all these bills piling up and you're saying, ah, Chris, help me. I freaking became a don't wanter in the game of real estate. I thought I wanted it. I definitely don't anymore. Ma'am, I don't want that. After I caught the bug, I knew that I needed to buy my first house. And you know what my mentor said? He said, Chris, you gotta save up enough money for a 3% down payment, that's gonna be roughly $5,000 in the bank. And I was like, man, do you know how long it'll take me to save $5,000? Like, I'm in debt right now. Well, it took me 14 months. 14 months later, I found myself a sweet little house, had a basement apartment, and the house had a value of $150,000. I was able to purchase it for $110,000. And you know what? That meant that it had the difference between its value and what I was buying it for was a $40,000 position that we call equity, meaning the moment I buy this house on paper, I'm gonna be worth $40,000 more. And the bank only requested a 3% down payment. So 3% on $110,000 is literally like less than 3,500 bucks. Of the $5,000 that I had saved, I had $1,500 left over, and the bank put up 97% of the money. Some people may have said, Chris, how risky to go $105,000 in debt that you now owe the bank. But you know what this house did? I got to live in it for free because the basement rent was greater than that of the mortgage. A year later, I accessed this equity and dumped it into another property that I made over $100,000 on. And in the meantime of owning it, $600 a month of leftover money after paying all my expenses. Bottom line is, 
real estate was the ultimate shortcut to getting ahead. But this isn't the only way of doing it, and there's ways of getting in the game without a 3% down payment. Check some of these strategies out. Let me start with the basics if you wanna buy a home, and then let me talk about what it looks like if you wanna buy investment properties. First off, if you're looking to buy a home and it's for you, 3% is a pretty standard down payment. It was for me then, it'll likely be this way a long time into the future. So you can say, well, what's 3% on the home that I wanna buy? If I wanna buy a $300,000 house, multiply that by 0 0.03, that equals $9,000. This is one of the most affordable ways to get in the game of real estate because if you get a good deal or something in the future that could be turned into a great investment, that's a really small amount of money, a small deposit to be able to buy it. Likewise, you should be aware that there's a lot of other loans to help people that live in really agrarian or farming communities, military, they can get away literally with putting no money down and there's loans that will support them getting that as well. But the game changes when you wanna become an investor and buy what's called a non-owner occupied home. Basically a home that someone else is gonna live in, it's now an investment, check this out. How much do you gotta put down if it's an investment property? 20% is pretty standard. And right now banks have made it pretty sexy that if you put 25% down, they'll give you another rate drop, which just means lower interest rate, higher cash flow. So 20%, how do I figure that out? Well, I take out my calculator right here let me just show you this real quick. Let's just say with that median home price, here's my handy dandy calculator. Let's say I'm buying a house for $350,000. I can multiply that by 0.2 and my down payment is gonna be roughly $70,000 or check it out on this next slide here. If that median home price is exactly 346,800, I multiply it by 0.2 and to be more precise, it's going to be 69,360 bucks. And you know what? That is a lot of money to come up with, which leads a guy like me and a person like you to say, I wonder if there's a better way. I wonder if we can be more strategic, more intelligent. I wonder if there's a way to win a whole lot more. Do you think Chris Crone's gonna buy a investment property for $350,000? No, I'm not. Why? Did you know that it's very difficult to get a positive cash flow on a property at $350,000? Every time I do my calculation, the sweet spot where you make the most cash flow is when you buy homes under $200,000. Now I get it, you might be in an expensive market, but guess what? I don't buy in every backyard. When I transact real estate, which if you click my links below, I show you exactly how I do it. I go to the top three, out of 324 markets, and that's how I'm earning an average of a 25% ROI when I buy real estate. Here are some of my rules. Number one, when I buy a home, my average purchase price is closer to $150,000. That is substantially lower than the median, but a home in this price range has the chance to really boom in price. My cash flow is also going to be on a percentage basis, a lot happier number. Number two, there's a way to buy real estate where the money doesn't actually have to come from you. There are four different strategies that I leverage when buying real estate, and I'm gonna show you all four of them right now. The first way to fund a deal, you could do the old Dave Ramsey methodology and save up money. Stupid! This is the slowest path to get where you want in life, and you know what? That might be how I started my journey, but if I could time machine back to the beginning, I'm telling you right now, I would've smacked myself and said, don't you dare consult with your wallet, your bank account, or your credit score to determine when you can make your next million bucks in real estate. And by the way, if you hang with me, if you're a subscriber on this channel, I do nothing but teach you the most intelligent ways to get in the game. Number two, your 401ks and IRAs. You may have been setting money aside for retirement because guess what? There's no pension likely with your company. Government's not really gonna bail you out. So you've been saving up for your retirement. There's only one problem with your 401k and IRA they kind of suck at making money. Like they grow on average over 30 years at a mid single digit ROI. Your earning make five, six, 7%. And if you look at what that'll turn into over 40 years, it's not exactly what you would call an impressive sum of money. Instead, you're gonna get to retirement and say, oh crap, I suck. I wish I hadn't listened to everybody else and I wish I'd been smarter. Now might be the time for you to look at how do I tap this? How do I get that money out? How do I dump it into something way more lucrative like real estate? Let me show you one of my favorites. You might already have a home and you're trying to figure out how to buy more. There's a good chance with how prices have gone up that you have this nifty little thing called equity. 
Let me give you an example of what it looks like. Let's say right now that you actually have a home at the median price. It's worth $350,000. That's the value. But what you owe on it is, we'll call it $150,000. Maybe you've been living there for the last you know, 10, 15 years. You've been paying it down through the mortgage system. And that means that you have how much equity? It's the difference between the value and what you owe. $350,000 minus what you owe $150,000 is $200,000. Now, the bank won't give you $200,000. They'll give you up to a certain amount of what your home is valued at. And generally, it's about 80%. So I'm gonna pull up my calculator and I'm gonna show you right now how to calculate exactly how much money the bank will give you based on what your value is. You see, if my home were worth 350,000 and the bank will let me go up to 80%, I'm gonna multiply it by 0.8. And it tells me that the bank will give me up to 280,000. But I only owe 150,000, so 280 minus what I owe equals $130,000. Of my $200,000 of equity, there's $130,000 that the bank will give me. What could I do with that $130,000? Well, shoot, I could probably go and buy two or three investment properties with a 20% down payment. And theoretically, if I go and buy three homes, and let's say I've got a cash flow of $400 on each one of them at three homes, there's 400 plus 400 plus 400, that equals $1,200 of extra money a month. And you know what? When you borrow the money from your house, the bank's gonna say, give me a little bit more money. Rates have gone down, but let's say it costs you five, $600. You're still making an extra 1,200 a month. You're gonna be up. You're gonna be positive. You're gonna have more assets. They're all gonna be growing. Home equity is a fantastic way for you to get in the game. The fourth strategy, and by far my favorite, what I call OPM. You know what that stands for? Opium. No, not like the drug, like OPM, other people's money. Did you know that there are other people with retirement funds and home equity or savings, and they don't have a clue of what to do for retirement? You know how many people say, hey, Joe, Kim, come check out this Chris Krohn guy, and together they learn, they subscribe, and before you know it, they're actually out there hustling, they're making deals happening, they're combining assets. OPM is a fantastic way of buying real estate. It's fantastic. Now, no matter what financial situation you're in, no matter how young or old you are, you actually have one of these four strategies that you can leverage right now. For example, if you've saved up money or you have assets in retirement or you have equity in your home, but you're like, geez, Chris, I don't really know how to get in the game of real estate, there's a link below in this video that says, partner with me. I've got 200 experts that are buying me homes just about every single day. My net worth is growing millions of dollars a year and it could be growing with you too if we were partnered up. Or you might be thinking, Chris, I don't got any assets. I'm young, I haven't had a shot, I'm at my do-over and I'm looking for some of this OPM. Well, let me tell you what, there's another link below that says there's a way to partner up with me as a zero cash partner as in you don't put up any money and I'll literally show you how to go find people with the money I'll bring the deals to the table, we'll marry everything together, and you and I can become equal partners. Bottom line is there's always a way for you to do real estate. And if you're not really sure what that looks like, you're gonna find two links below. One of you that has assets, one of you that doesn't have assets, and either way, you get to invest and you get to succeed. Hey, thanks for checking out today's video. Listen, if you wanna have a lot more cash in your life, make sure that you subscribe or follow me on TikTok, Instagram, or my other social that's out there. Heck, I'm even on iTunes. Bottom line is, I got all sorts of knowledge designed to help you release that inner multimillionaire and have the life and success that you want. Now listen, also, if you enjoyed today's video, aside from giving it a thumbs up, you might enjoy this next video that I made that is all about your lending options. In fact, there's a lingo to lending. You should actually learn what are specifically the different type of loans that can help me get in the game of real estate with less and less money. Click this link, I'll actually show you exactly what that looks like. I leverage when buying real estate, and I'm gonna teach you all four of them right now. I'm gonna shoot you yeah. for. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Just, just say I'm gonna show you all four of them. Put them on. Yes. You ready?